right, welcome back. So that was very fun. We found out how to make a piece of geometry out of other pieces of geometry, but what if I didn't want to use a soft to give me this positional data, right? So let's come out of here. Actually, let's make a new guy. Let's come, let's close this. Command A to grab everyone, Command X to copy them and to delete them, and then double click. I'm gonna grab a base, boom, base. Awesome, come inside, command V to bring it all back. That's so great. I love when my work doesn't totally get deleted. Come back out and I'm gonna call this just inferencing one. Great, and then let's command C, command V, give myself a new one so it's all set up, right? Awesome, but I don't want to use a stop to give me my positional information, or at least not all of it, right? You remember how we used positions to give us colors over here, right? We went to our instancing page, and instead of colors, we sent T, X, T, Y, T, Z, and that is how we got these cool little kooky guys, right? So maybe I wanna do that again. Maybe I want to use a color to give me positional information. For example, what if I wanted to make a two-dimensional image pop out of the screen, right? I wanted to make a top look like it was coming towards me based on, let's say, its red value, because red is a very clear color to the eye. It stands out a lot. It makes sense if you base steps off of that, right? People will look at it. It'll make sense. So let's see how we might do that, right? So I'm going to delete this Taurus. I'm going to leave this null here just in case I do want to grab something, right? But what do I need, right? I, I kind of want there to be a plane for it to pop off of. I kind of want a canvas of some kind, right? So a canvas, let me grab a grid. That's what, what is a grid if not a canvas, right? And I'm gonna take this grid and I'm gonna connect it to my null. Awesome, that's very fun. And look, this is what modular networks really do because you can plug something in and it will immediately work. That's very fun. Oh, it's still spinning. I'm gonna stop it from spinning. One moment. Hmm. Another fun fact, if you have any data saved is as an expression or as a channel export or anything like that, if you don't delete it, if you just click on one of the other boxes, it will save that data in case you ever want to go back to it. So if I decided, actually, no, I, I don't want it to be a zero rotation. I do want it to be that expression. I can just click here. I don't have to retype it again. It's still saved. So that's a fun little fact. Anyway, so I have this information, right? But I said that I wanted to displace this in the Z plane, right? And because this is a grid, it kind of only has a TY and a TX that are interesting anyway. There is, there's not really depth here. So this TZ value, as you can see, it's a straight line. It's not contributing a whole lot in terms of meaningful data. So what I am going to do is come in here, make this not active, and I, to insert an operator in between, I'm gonna tap with two fingers on my trackpad on the connector itself. I'm gonna say insert operator and I'm gonna do a select, boom, boom, so that I can just grab TX, boom, and TY. I could also type them, but I decided not to this time. So now TZ is not getting sent. And you will see, I have this little warning sign that says I can't find TZ. It's because if I come into my geo, I go to my instance page, I'm telling you to look for TZ, but I'm not sending it a channel that is called DZ. So it's like, I don't know who that is. I don't know her. I'm trying and I don't know. So I can make that go away by just simply saying, don't worry about it and deleting it. And now it isn't gone. And oh, because it's in the color as well. Yeah. Okay. There you go. Awesome. So where do I get my TZ from? Right. Oh, I'm going to delete this as well. Cause we don't need this little, this little guy. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Boom. Great. So I have my TX, I have my TY. Where am I going to get this TZ from, right? We said it was from the red channel. So first we're going to grab a movie file in, top, top, movie file in, boom, boom. Awesome. I'm going to do Alt N, grab myself a null, put that down just in case I want to switch this top out with anything. Then how do we make sure that these channels have the same number of points, right? So we know where, where do we get numbers of points from the two different types of channels that we have here, right? From pieces of geometry, that's point numbers. They, they have a certain number of points based on with a grid, how many rows and columns it has, depending on what kind of 
geometry it is, it'll be based on something else, but it's essentially just how many points are in it, right? With the top, it's pixels. It's how many pixels. Each pixel becomes a point in terms of instancing, right? So I need to make sure that either this top has only as many pixels in it as this grid has points, or that this grid only has as many points as this top has pixels. Personally, I would prefer to do it, have the grid go based off of the top, just in case I decide that I need a higher or lower resolution here for this image. That makes sense to me, right? So I'm going to come in here and I am going to, between my null and my movie file in, I'm going to insert a resolution top so that this, no matter what gets plugged in here, right, it will have to pass through something that will guarantee it only has as many points as I want it to have because you saw when we changed the box to a sphere in the previous video, the computer slows down a lot the more points you have. It's true that this is a much more efficient way of doing your drawing, but you still want to make sure that you don't have like 1280 by 720 points. That's just, that's too many. It wouldn't look good and it wouldn't feel good to your computer, right? So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to say custom resolution. And instead of this, I'm going to say like 70 by 70, right? You want something that's going to be big enough that you can see what your top is still, right? You can discern it, but not big enough that it's going to be ridiculous to try to calculate, right? So great. Then I'm going to come here to this grid, right? And I'm going to say, hello, grid. If we think about it, the rows, rows go down, right? Row, 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 row. So the rows need to be the same as the height of this, right? It goes up and down. So I'm going to come here. I'm going to say, hello, rows. I want you to be the same as the operator called null three, great dot height. Boom. Awesome. Then I'm going to do the same thing here. I want you to be the same as operator called null three, boom, dot width. Wow. Awesome. And these are 70 by 70 because I made it 70 by 70. But if I were to make this 100 by 70, you can see it will change. And that is why not hard coding things is awesome <laughs> because it makes things go faster. Awesome. Okay. So now I have this, this is all set up. I know that I have the same number of points here as here. So how do I get my red channel out of this, right? I got to make a top, a chop. What do I do? I use top to chop. God, this designer's awesome. Okay. So now I have this. I can see that it is only taking, if we look at the crop, it only takes one row and I can't have that. I need every pixel, right? I need every point. I got to go and I got to come in here and I got to say, give me the whole image. Give me the whole thing. Ooh, that's a lot, right? But I actually, first of all, I could knock some of this off because I only want the red and I don't want the red to be called red. I want the red to be called TZ because I'm using it as a depth, right? I'm actually going to close this viewer just because it's a little exhausting. Then I'm going to grab a shuffle. Boom, boom. And I'm going to say sequence channels by name. That's going to put all the things called red with all the other things called red and turn it from this mess that you can't even see <laughs> to this guy, which is much more manageable. Okay, amazing. So now I have a channel and it's called TZ. Um, just for my personal preference, I'm actually going to put a mask here as well because whenever you're giving something a new range, especially a depth right now, because pixels automatically, colors go from zero to one. So this has a range of zero to one. If I wanted it, that means the, the closest it's ever gonna get to me, the most it's ever gonna pop off the canvas is one unit, right? But if I wanted to make that more or less, I just wanna have a math in here so that I can range it really easily, right? So I'm gonna take this math, I'm gonna bring it into my merge. Now you can see I have another channel. And then I'm gonna come to my geo. I'm going to say, put the TZ and boom. Whoa, that's so cool. Let me tap on this so that you can view it. View. Awesome. So what is this? What, look, it's a banana. <laughs> kind of weird. Okay. Uh, and so just as I was saying, right, it's a little bit hard to see because maybe it's too, it's too popped out. So I'm actually going to come in here and instead of zero to one, I'm going to say zero to 0.5. There we go. It's a little more compressed than I can kind of see. That's a banana. That's pretty cool, right? But if I wanted to make this even clearer, if you remember, it's currently coloring based on its position. Let me actually color it by its actual colors in the top, right? Because every pixel in there has a color that's assigned to it, right? So all I have to do is I have to somehow get my pixels back, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back here and instead 
in my top to chop and I'm gonna say actually you know what remember all those channels that I deleted I actually want them back so give me red call it red give me green call it green give me blue call it blue I don't need alpha that's fine right and so what's happening now is that all of my channels are coming through my shuffle they're being sequenced properly that's true but now they're going through this math and I don't want all of them to go through the math right I just I do want all of them to eventually make it into the merge but I don't want them to all go through this math I only want my red channel to go through my math because I only want to drive the depth based off the red channel right so what do I need I need a select so I'm gonna bring this math down I'm going to take the shuffle, drag it right out, replace this connector, boom, so that I have red, green, blue going to my merge. And then I'm going to insert here a select, insert operator, select, beautiful. Wow, that's really fun. Okay, cool. And then in my select, I only want the red, boom. Rename from this little asterisk means everything that's there, anything rename from whatever is here. So rename from red, rename to TZ. Beautiful. Now my channel is called TZ. Who remember the range is still going, right? Then we're going to take this TZ. We're going to put it back in here. Boom. Awesome. My banana, it's back. Except for the colors are not different. Why? Haven't told the instance page to look anywhere different. So it's doing the same thing. So I'm going to come to my instance and instead of TX and TY, I'm going to say the channel called R, the channel called G, and the channel called D and check that out y'all that is a banana that is definitively a banana that's pretty fun and cool right so look at this this is great and we could do this this doesn't just have to be a static image if this were a moving image if this were a video this would still work you could have things move around right so let's see what we can do touch designer has in the folder they have some videos that are moving if I come here into the nature let us go to nature 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 silly there we go nature let's grab this uh, none of these are particularly clear because they don't move that much they just kind of sway actually that might work let's do actually ooh, it, okay so these are too big let's make them let's first of all let's make our boxes a little bit smaller so that we can see what we're doing let me grab my box i'm gonna bring it down Mm -hmm. point two, maybe. Yeah, now I can kind of see what's happening. So I can't see what's going on. I can see things are moving. Let's choose a different file. Let's do, let's do maybe some fog will rise in a cool way. Yeah, ooh, hey, that's kind of fun. Look at that. They move, they ripple and, and move based on the red. That's really kind of awesome, right? So if you think about this, when you work with depth cameras or even just with live camera feeds, you can push people's bodies out of the back of a canvas, right? You can have audience members walk by your camera and see themselves in geometry. That's pretty fun. And, and look how we did that with so few operators. This network is so small, right? But that's just, that's the power of these kinds of softwares, right? Of Touch Designer itself. So we have now generated some point positions using colors. What if I wanted to control some animations using tops, right? Or what if I wanted to control it using something else? What if I wanted to control it using sound to make audio reactive geometry? What if I didn't want to use guiding stops at all? What if I wanted to totally fabricate my entire geometry just based off of some other point of data, right? Well, that is what we are going to do in the next and final video. So stick around and we'll be right back. And as always, you did an awesome job. Bye.